Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and I originally had a completely different project in mind for this week that didn't pan out, so I got a bit of a late start on this one, so I'm sorry it's a little bit later going out than usual. Starting with the cups for the top, I've marked the placement for darts and fold the fabric to line them up. The lining is actually completely optional, but the red fabric I chose for the exterior seems like it might stain, so I cut pieces out of white cotton to line it with and prevent that. I sew the darts into the exterior cut pieces, backstitching at the very tip of the darts to ensure they won't pull apart. Once the darts are sewn, I trim off the extra material to reduce bulkiness. Another thing I want to mention is that while I'm using cotton and it will work fine, the stiffer the fabric, the less well this pattern will fit. It's ideally meant for something with some spandex or lycra content so it has some stretch, but my stretch fabric didn't get here in time for this video, so I'm just kind of making do. To make this a little fancier, I put some lace on the front of the exterior cups and sew it down. This also makes the cups a little stiffer, but I'm willing to sacrifice that for the aesthetic. Then I move on to the lining. The cups get the darts sewn in the same way as the exterior fabric, but if you're not putting in a lining, you can just skip this step. After the cup linings are done, I put the lining and the cup exterior together with right sides together and sew around the top edge. If you aren't using the lining, you would just hem the top edge instead. Once it's sewn together, I turn the cups right side out. Now would be an excellent time to press them, but when I was cleaning my studio last week, I managed to misplace my iron, which seems like it would be really hard to do, but I put it somewhere and now I can't find it. So I finger press the edges to the best of my ability, and if things are a little wrinkly, I'll just have to deal with it. It can still be cute, even if it's not perfect. The next step is attaching the cups to the band. The cups go against this with right sides together, with one corner lined up right in the middle of the band where the peak is, and the unfinished edge along one of the curves in the band's top edge. The other corner of the cup doesn't get pinned to the outer edge of that curve, but about a quarter of an inch in from the edge, so that there's room left to hem it or connect the lining to it later. Both cups go on like this, and they should touch each other in the center. The rest of the curve gets pinned to the edge of the cup, and you have the option of jumping straight to sewing it in place, but I have difficulty getting it to sew without wrinkles unless I do it by hand first. So I use some little basting stitches to hold the cups in place for now. If you're better at hand sewing than I am, you can also just attach the cups this way and be done, but I'm not great at it because my hands are so shaky and weak, so I go over it with the sewing machine once I'm done. We all have our proficiencies, and there's nothing wrong with making adjustments to a project that suit your particular skill set. 
I'm probably never going to be good at hand sewing, and I'm okay with that because I've learned how to compensate by using my machine for really small stuff. I couldn't get the lining to lay very nicely on one of the cups, so it'll be a little bit visible, but that's okay, I'll live with it. I can always add more lace later if I decide I want to hide it. To attach the band lining, once the cups are on, you can pin the lining to the lining side of the cups and to the band with the right sides together, then sew along the bottom of the cups. I prefer to sew a little lower down than the stitching line where the cups connect to the exterior fabric, which means there will be extra stitching visible on the inside, but none will show on the outside if you can't get it to line up perfectly. Then it's time to close the top edge of the band. Make sure the cups are folded out of the way so they won't get sewn over by mistake. Then line up the exterior and the lining along the top edge of the band and the very small side edge. Sew this closed, turning in the corner so the side and top get closed at the same time, leaving the bottom edge open. The top corner of the band can be clipped to get it to fold right side out more neatly if necessary. We're close to finishing the hard parts now. The last thing to do is to fold the bottom edge of the band and the lining inside by about a quarter inch, pin them together, and sew. This can be easier if you fold one side at a time, press them, then put them together, but misplaced iron so I can't do that. I'm going to find that this weekend, I swear. Then sew along the bottom edge to close it. Backstitching at the beginning and end of this seam will prevent this from coming undone. I like to finish by top stitching all the way around the rest of the top and the cups, especially since I chose to use a contrasting thread. It just adds a little more interest and helps things lay nicely, which is a boon for me in the wake of my misplaced iron. Now what's left is decoration, closures, and straps. I hand stitch some lace to the inside of the bottom edge. I also add a white ribbon along the bottom of the cups where they meet with the band because I feel like it looks really cute with the white bow I add to the center.
For closures, this is designed to close with a hook and eye so the pieces don't overlap in the back. But I also thought I might want to try this on a doll with a slightly larger torso than what my Feeple 65 has. So I made my own double eye loop with a bit of wire and sewed it to the inside so I can lace this closed in the back instead of using a hook. That way, it can expand to fit a larger doll. The very last step is adding straps. If I were to use this only for my Feeple 65, I could sew the ribbon to the top of the cups and to the back of the band and have a perfect fit. But I want something adjustable since I want multiple dolls to be able to use this. So instead, I cut longer pieces of ribbon and sew them to the inside of the cup only so they can be tied around the neck, and that's what makes this more of a halter. And that's it! The top's now ready to wear, and the ribbons can be tied around the neck or shoulders in a variety of styles, so it's a versatile design that can be used for layering, too. That's all for today, though. Thanks for watching! Bye!